the heart-wrenching legacy of the early Islamic fitness. Imagine a community bound by faith, united by the teachings of a beloved prophet, peace be upon him, and suddenly plunged into a whirlwind of chaos, bloodshed, and deep-seated divisions. This is the poignant story of the fitness, a series of internal conflicts that tore apart the early Muslim community in the 7th century. These civil wars, laden with political ambition, personal vendettas, and theological disputes, not only reshaped the political landscape of the time, but also left an indelible mark on the Islamic world, with reverberations felt to this day. The first fitna erupted in 656 CE, immediately after the assassination of the third caliph, Uthman ibn Affan. Uthman's murder was not just a political event, it was a cataclysm that shattered the fragile unity of the nascent Muslim community. His death created a power vacuum and set the stage for a bitter struggle over who should rightfully lead the Muslims. Ali ibn Abi Talib, the Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him, cousin and son-in-law was chosen as the fourth caliph, but his ascension was met with fierce opposition from powerful factions within the community. The Battle of the Camel in 656 CE saw Ali's forces clashing with those led by Aisha, the Prophet's widow, along with Talha and Zubair, prominent companions of Muhammad, peace be upon him. The battle, fought near Basra, ended in a tragic victory for Ali, as the battlefield was soaked with the blood of Muslims fighting Muslims. The sight of revered figures like Aisha opposing Ali painted a stark picture of the deep divisions within the community. This was not merely a political contest. It was a heartbreaking episode that pitted brother against brother and believer against believer. The conflict escalated with the Battle of Sifan in 657 CE, where Ali faced off against Muawiyah, the governor of Syria. The battle ended in a stalemate and led to arbitration, which only served to weaken Ali's position further. The arbitration was seen by many as a betrayal of Islamic principles, leading to the rise of the Karajites, a radical faction that denounced both Ali and Muawiyah. The Karajites, originally supporters of Ali, now turned against him, culminating in the Battle of Narawan in 658 CE. Ali's forces defeated the Karajites, but the damage was done. Ali's authority was severely undermined, and in 1661 CE, he was assassinated by a Karajit, marking the end of the first fitna. The conclusion of the first fitna did not bring peace. Instead, it laid the groundwork for the second fitna, which erupted in 680 CE following the death of Muawiyah the May. His son, Yazid I, ascended to the caliphate, but his rule was immediately contested. The most notable challenger was Hussein ibn Ali, the son of Ali and grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hussein's refusal to pledge allegiance to Yazid and his subsequent martyrdom at the Battle of Karbala in 680 CE became a defining moment in Islamic history. The brutal slaughter of Hussein and his supporters by Yazid's forces was not just a political event. It was a profound tragedy that resonated deeply with the Muslim community. Hussein's martyrdom at Karbala is a symbol of resistance against tyranny and injustice for Shia Muslims, who commemorate this event annually during Ashura with deep mourning and reflection. The emotional weight of Karbala cemented the divide between Sunni and Shia Islam, with the Shia community venerating Hussein and his family as the rightful leaders of the Muslim Ummah. The second fitna continued with the revolt of Abdullah ibn al-Zubayr, who declared himself caliph in Mecca, challenging the Umayyad authority. The conflict dragged on until 692 CE, when Abd al-Malik ibn Marwan, the Umayyad caliph, re-established control. The prolonged nature of these civil wars left the Muslim community exhausted and fragmented, setting a precedent for future power struggles and schisms. The long-term impact of the fitness on Islam cannot be overstated. The Sunni-Shia divide, rooted in these early conflicts, persists to this day, shaping theological, cultural, and political landscapes across the Muslim world. 
the martyrdom of Hussein is a cornerstone of Shia identity, representing the ultimate sacrifice in the face of oppression. For Sunni Muslims, the fitness underscore the importance of unity and the dangers of internal discord. These early conflicts also had a profound impact on Islamic jurisprudence and theology. The debates and divisions that arose during the fitness led to the development of distinct schools of thought, each interpreting Islamic principles in ways that addressed the challenges of their time. The need to reconcile the ideals of Islam with the realities of political power led to the codification of Islamic law, Sharia, and the emergence of various theological perspectives. The legacy of the fitness is a complex tapestry of tragedy and resilience. The internal strife that once threatened to tear the Muslim community apart ultimately contributed to its rich diversity and depth. The painful lessons learned during these turbulent times helped shape the Islamic civilization, fostering a tradition of intellectual and spiritual inquiry that continues to thrive. In the end, the fitness serve as a poignant reminder of the fragility of unity and the enduring strength of faith. The bloodshed and betrayal of those early conflicts are balanced by the unwavering spirit of those who sought justice and truth. The legacy of the fitness is not just one of division and discord, but also of perseverance, reflection, and the enduring quest for a just and compassionate society.